Sunday. I'm so glad you're here on this journey of a hundred days of collage. And guess what? This week we're going to reach the halfway point. Oh, it's absolutely amazing. We get to 52 collages this week and our theme this week is green. Can you just feel the rejuvenating power of green? I absolutely love it. I find it so incredibly refreshing. The thought of stepping into the forest and feeling the beautiful presence of the lush green. How does it make you feel? Do you like it? Do you not? <laughs> Are you going to create with me this week? <laughs> this week I'm going to be showing you how to do image transfers and it's so incredibly exciting. We're going to be working on some beautiful portraits to put in our forest <laughs> amongst the trees. So join with me with week seven of our fabulous collage journey. Can't you just feel the beautiful lush presence of green? Oh, it's fantastic. Anything other than yellow <laughs> would be a great improvement after last week. <laughs> Thanks for coming back. Thanks for your support to get me through last week. I was feeling the love and it was awesome. Yay! This week we're doing green. It isn't easy being green. I love it. It's so beautiful. So I've got some jelly prints here. This will be from the muted green. I've used muted green in these colors. Some phthalo turquoise. Now turquoise is a blue green color. So don't nitpick with me. It does tend to look blue. Sometimes it looks green depending on your brand and your paint. The phthalo turquoise tends to be more green, whereas the muted turquoise in the Liquitex is more blue. There you go, right? Um, the cobalt turquoise, this one is a light hue. It's a beautiful color, absolutely loved it. Slapped it on some of these gel prints. And then I used a pastel version of the turquoise. I've also thrown on some phthalo green inks and some of this fabulous um, silver moss. That's a glorious color. Let me show you what these beautiful inks have done. So that there is the silver moss. This is my painted tissue that I love for collage. One of my favorite collage papers is to just paint ordinary white tissue. So that one's had the phthalo green and the silver moss on it. Look at them, absolutely beautiful colors. Totally love them. All of these beautiful greens. What else have I got? Oh, my trees. Thank you, Kath, for sending me the Stencil Girl stencil. She sent me a whole heap of them that she didn't want anymore. And in that pack was this glorious stencil of trees. Oh, just in time for Green Week. I'm so happy about that. And then when I was rummaging through all of my fabulous gel prints, going through my stash, trying to find different things to use, I came across my fabulous image transfers. Yay! So this image transfer of this portrait I did in the turquoise on some glassine paper. That is pretty nice on the turquoise, don't you think? I'm going to have to use that. It's fabulous. I also dug out this one as well. She's rather glorious. Um, absolutely beautiful. Again, it's the turquoise. That would probably be the phthalo turquoise. Yes, I'm pretty sure about that. It's looking just beautiful. So uh, image transfers. Do you know how to do image transfers? Uh, do you want to know how to do image transfers? Do you want to watch me make these image transfers before I put them into collage? Uh, do you? <laughs> okay, how about we watch me make these image transfers before I actually put them into a collage because I am definitely using them. Look, that's going to be magnificent. Pretty sure I should add some trees. I'm loving that feel of being in the depth of the forest and just uh, finding your zen. Yes, that's how the green makes me feel. So I think we should definitely uh, use these image transfers. Okay, we're going to do it. That's what we're going to do first. Let's watch the image transfers. 
So I'm just experimenting with some different colors, different papers and different images for image transfers. Love the process. It is a little tricky. Um, you have to have a good image to start with that has strong contrast areas. You then can't put too much paint on the gel plate or the image won't transfer well, but you have to have enough paint on the plate for it to take a print. I know, it's a little tricky. So, as you can see, nice thin coat of paint. There's my image. I only use royalty-free images. And at the moment, I'm completely captivated with the portraits on Unsplash. Can't believe you get to use them for free. Seriously, Ugh, resources are endless. It's so, so cool. Wow, look at that. That is really nice. I'm going to put that on this paper. I actually don't remember what this paper is. I bought it for a project. I don't know what the project was. <laughs> we'll see if it works. Right on. It's coming off the plate, so, you know, can't be all bad. Just got to be a little bit more gentle because it doesn't want to roll. There we go. She's quite beautiful. I liked the way this particular photo has this strong shadow side of her face. And I knew that the light area wouldn't print. And that's really cool. I think why I liked the idea of this paper was the transparency. So if I put it, was to collage it over something like this. Look how cool that looks. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. You gotta admit, that's pretty cool. I'm liking that. So this is my portrait. I'm gonna try it again because I just think it's gonna uh, work really well for a collage idea. Um, I always get two prints done when I get things printed out. I get my... Um, Photos from the office stationery, which is a five minute walk for me. It's easy. And I always get two because if I stuff one up, then I can have another chance of getting it right. But also if something works well and the idea is good, then, you know, I get to make another one, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the print again uh, with a different color. This time I'm using Payne's Gray. And I'm going to put it, I'm going to try this one on tissue, I think. Like I said, this is a royalty-free image from Unsplash. Get to use it free. Just amazes me. So thin layer of paint. Good firm rub. And hope for the best. <laughs> you do have to get a little bit of practice. And you have to be persistent. Don't give up. If it doesn't work straight away, you just have to keep working on it. Oh, pretty nice, pretty nice. I think Payne's Grey is pretty much my favourite colour with image transfers. You do have to be a little bit gentle with the tissue. get it on without too many crinkles. You can also wait, of course, and then put another layer of paint on the gel plate and pull the print that way. No, but then you have to wait. <laughs> you have to wait until it's dry. What I like about uh, using tissue is that because it's so fine, it can pull up a lot of the paint that's on the plate. What I don't like about it is because it's so fine, it can tear really easily. So, you know, meh. You just got to be a little bit gentle. Oh, she's pulled up nice. She's come off the plate well. And there she is. The tissues worked fine. The colour is great. I love Payne's Grey. It's a great colour. 
that's got some great potential to make a really interesting collage. Ta-da! Right, so that's how you do the image transfer. Now, if you need a more thorough lesson for image transfers, I have three fabulous classes on Skillshare. They're awesome. You need to check that out. I do a lot of the process of exactly how to do the image transfer. First, take you through step by step. We complete a project. It's wonderful. I also have a whole playlist on YouTube if you want to also look at my other videos on image transfers there. But it's really quite simple. I'll just reiterate in case you weren't paying attention, you need a color laser print. Now this is the print that I've used to create this image transfer that you just watched. I know it's black and white, but I had it printed as a color print from my office stationery, which is five minutes walk away, because it works better. You saw it work, it works fabulous, and it works every time. You might try using black and white photos and it might work for you. It didn't work for me from the place that I got my images printed. So just so you know. Now, when I did this image, it was a color image as well. So, you know, I printed that in color. Same thing, the black and white versions for me from where I get my prints done don't work. Uh, but you will have to test out that theory for you. And if you are using your own printer at home, that also might be causing you problems. No, it won't work with your inkjet. And sometimes it doesn't work with your home laser printers either. You need a full load of the toner when it gets printed because the toner resists the paint and sticks to your gel plate so you can pull the print. Anyway, if you want to get technical, check out the other classes on Skillshare or the playlist on YouTube and you can watch some more. I'm loving these. I'm feeling it today with the green. We've got to go with the trees. I want to feel like I'm in the forest. That's where we're headed. So I'm definitely going to use her. She's beautiful. She was printed in the turquoise, so I'm in the right theme. Now, when I was thinking about it, I was going to put some music notes under her because it looked fabulous. Do I want to do that? Maybe. I definitely want to use the trees and I may use one or more of the image transfers. I'm not sure. You know, I create these collages spontaneously as we do them together. So I have a few of the image transfers. I could possibly do one or more pages with them. I'm feeling the trees. I mean, I'm, I'm, saying, I'm in the forest. <laughs> I love it. It's so much fun. So I'm going to do something with the trees. So many possibilities. I really did like the way I sat it on the music here and she's coming through. I think that's rather cool. Maybe I'll stick with that plan. And I might even put some of the music notes over here under my trees, right? Because it's the sound of the forest. Oh, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's awesome. I think we might do that. Let's do that. Let's start with that. Or maybe I'll add some of this underneath as well to give it a bit of light. You know, like the, the light that, that goes through the trees and you get that mottly color and the lot of the light shining through. That could be cool too. I don't know if it'll work, but it's a cool idea. Uh, maybe I'll put some green around the edge. All right. Let's play with that idea. That's a good place to start. Or I can always put some on top as well. All right, let's do that then. Now, that is looking fabulous. I put, oopsies, stop poking at it. <laughs> I put the beautiful tissue, painted tissue underneath, and I put some of the music on there because I thought it would be fabulous. Loving the sounds of the forest. And then I've got my glorious stencil girl print on top yay it's looking beautiful now the second most vitally important aspect to remember when you're making an image transfer is the amount of paint when i first started creating image transfers i put on way too much paint i know you would find that so hard to believe <laughs> And the transfers didn't work. So it took me quite a few goes and a lot of practice to work out how much was too much paint 
and how much wasn't enough. So number one is your print copy it has to be a laser print. And number two, the amount of paint is vital to the success of your image transfer. But once you get those two aspects right, uh, um, it's absolutely glorious. I love creating image transfers so much. Um, I've done quite a few and I have quite a few lessons and classes because I love it so much. The amount of paint is vital. Too much paint and your image won't transfer onto the gel plate and not enough paint and it won't print onto the paper. So, you know, it does take a little practice. Don't give up after your first go because that's slack. Seriously, <laughs> you have to practice a few times. That's why I suggest printing out a few copies of the same image when you're at the print shop or when you're doing it yourself so that you can have a few goes. There she is. I'm loving that. That's going to have to dry now. This has to dry. Clearly, I can't touch it because if I do, I'll poke a hole in it. And I'm pretty happy. We're off to a great start for our fabulous green week. So I might do um, on the next page another one of these image transfers and probably some more trees because I'm loving it. Those trees are just fantastic. That stencil print just works so well. That was on the gel plate. And yay, all right, this has to dry and then we'll decide if I'm going to do the same image transfer, the other one that I have. You know, I think I might because I'd like to try some different coloured papers under her. Okay, you know, I've got eight to do. If I do a few in image transfers, it doesn't really matter, right? It's still green. <laughs> all right, we'll let that dry and see how we go. Okay, the pages are still a little damp, but, you know, being the patient person that I am, <laughs> I want to keep going. Um, loving it, loving my image transfer of the beautiful music notes. That's just a piece of craft paper that I used, the, the music notes. Um, Easy peasy lemon squeezy like hello, use what you've got, go digging through all of those cupboards and drawers and pull out all that fabulous craft paper that I know you've got laying around. Uh, the tissue looks great under the beautiful trees and I love that little strip of the music notes. It just connects the pages and I just love the story of it with the sound of the forest, the depth of the green and that feeling. Yes, I know, you're going to hear me say it a few times today. <laughs> now, what do you think? Shall we do another image transfer? The thing is about image transfers, every single time you do one, you're using a printed image, so it's a mono print. It comes out different every time, every single time. It doesn't matter if you use exactly the same printed image and you print it out five times, every time you take that image transfer from on your gel plate, it will come out different. And that's what I truly love about it. It really is very unique, absolute individual mono prints that you cannot reproduce. I will never create her the same again like that, even if I use the same color, because the amount of paint matters, uh, on the day, how you're feeling, your creative approach, it all really gets translated into the art that you create. I think that's what I love about the jelly plate too, is the beautiful capacity to do absolute individual mono prints that cannot be reproduced. I absolutely love that. This is still a little damp, so I'm just putting <laughs> some baking paper there because I don't want my pages to stick because then they'll tear my beautiful tissue and that would just make me cry. Um, I'm loving this right now, so we're going to have to continue. So now I've got exactly the same image that I printed with this image transfer. And yes, I did show you how to do that. So you know, you know how to do it. It's easy. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Just remember what I said. There's only two things to consider. Your print image and the amount of paint and then you'll be fine. So I'm going to do her because she's a different kind of mood and look being in a different colour. And I'm just loving it. I'm just feeling it today. So we're doing it. <laughs> 
Now, I'm not really big into the yellow greens. I prefer the more deeper turquoise tones, but I do really like this piece. I know it got torn in the process of making it on the gel plate. I was putting a second layer on and the first layer of the paper wasn't dry. I know, you find that hard to believe. And so I whacked it on the gel plate and it wasn't dry enough and it was damp and stuck and tore. Yeah, but it turned out beautiful and I love the pattern of it and I really like the color. Even though I'm not usually partial on these greens, I'm loving this one. So then I rummaged through my drawers and I pulled out some pieces of craft paper, which I decided I just have to have. I know it's looking like a bit of a jigsaw puzzle. That's because it was just bits and pieces that I had in my box. But I'm like, what the heck, right? Let's give this a go. I'm loving the feel of it. I'm loving the colors. I think it really works for what I want to create. So we're doing it. Um, where do I want that? Maybe down here. Maybe do I want it on top or below? You know, I don't know. But I'm putting this piece right there. This is the plan, Stan. This is the plan. And then I'm going to put the beautiful image transfer on top. And some of those fabulous colors will be able to come through. Oh, you'll be able to, her face will actually go green, which I don't mind. Kind of liking the mood of it. So it's going to go something like that. Yeah, like that, like that. Okay. This print is actually Payne's Grey. That's one of my favorite colors to do image transfers with because it's dark. The, to me, the darker colors print better. That's just from my experience, but you don't have to always use dark colors. I've just found that I've preferred it because it prints clearer. But, you know, you've got to experiment. That looks pretty cool, don't you think? Yeah. I'm thinking that's pretty nice. I printed this onto tissue because I like the transparency of having those multiple layers. Yay, let's do that. Now this side, I'm thinking something moody, I know. <laughs> and I pulled out these gel prints. They weren't great gel prints. Um, I was a bit late and I was tired and I made a mess. Oh man, I'd got everywhere. This was a different stencil. This is another Stencil Girl stencil that fabulous Kath had sent me. Trees, perfect. So it's a different tree shape, uh, but I'm liking it. I'm liking the color. I like the depth, the moodiness of it. So I'm thinking maybe tearing some of this so it's not so stiff. Something like that. I want to put that one there maybe and then tear that one. And then I need something to brighten it up. It looks to me like it's nighttime. You know when you're, you're out at night and the trees are all dark and there's kind of just a moon and it looks like there's water. I'm thinking that's what it feels like. Right? I'm going with the feel. So work with me here. I know it doesn't look like that exactly. <laughs> but the feel of it is like nighttime where the trees are and there's probably a lake. Righto, there's a lake. There's a lake. <laughs> so I might stick these on and then add some lake. Add a lake or a waterfall. <laughs> you can see where that's going to go, right? I'm going to do it. I'm going to stick this on and then we're creating a lake. Or if I stand it up, it'll be a waterfall. <laughs> Let's do that. Let's do that. Okay, so the pages have dried and I'm really happy with my forest feel. Oh man, I'm just feeling it. That beautiful refreshing green and the lush and the deep depth of being in the forest. I'm just feeling it and I want to paint it. <laughs> so that's all there is to it. My image transfer looks fabulous. And then what I did was the, the painted tissue that I put under the stencil, I continued it onto this page just so the color would run over more and connect the images. And I really like that. That makes me happy. Then the musical notes are under that section of the stencil and it's all looking rather glorious. Yay. So then the second page spread, the beautiful image transfer I put onto the craft paper and this green piece, which I really liked. 
I think the transfer looks fabulous. It's giving her this green complexion, but it's really interesting and moody. And I love the craft paper shapes are fat, great too. They've worked really well. You, you know, oh, so much better this week than last week. That's all I can say. Now, my forest green color over this side with the different tree stencil. Um, I put another kind of ghost impression with that same stencil with um, interference green. So that would be this one here, the golden interference green. Interference paints look amazing on dark backgrounds. And because this background was so dark, I just thought it would look really good and work really well in kind of a ghosty impression of the trees. And I'm pretty happy with it. The interference paints are... Uh, coated mica flakes and they interfere with the light spectrum so over dark colors they really look amazing over white or light colors you cannot see them at all um, i have a whole episode on interference paints if you're interested they are fabulous i love them and the interference green matches so well with these colors over here yay it's making me happy now i wanted to run some ink down here like water i'm still on the tangent of it could be water. So I think we should do that. It just feels like that to me. Like there could be like a pool or a pond under the trees at night. I know. I get off on my little tangents and really that's just how it goes. Um, I'm putting down paper towel because we know this could end badly. <laughs> so I'm not sure what I want to do really. I've got some beautiful galactic blue in the FW Pearlescent. This brand is amazing. I love it. Um, if you're in New Zealand, I'll put the links under the video where you can buy it from. All of the information, if you want to know that I'm talking about something and you want to know where to get it or where to watch it, they'll, it'll all be in the description under the video. So, you know, just have a little look if you want to know more. Now, I know it's a bit of a crazy idea, but that's how I roll. I love crazy ideas. I'm just thinking, can we get away with a little bit of water? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe we can. Maybe we won't. <laughs> I'm not too sure exactly what I'm trying to achieve. I just thought it would be fun. But, you know, sometimes it doesn't always go exactly how you plan. And sometimes it goes even better. But I'm thinking I just wanted to run some blue down there. Yeah, that's okay. It's okay. Maybe kind of like a pool of water beneath the trees. I don't know. It was just a thought. It was just an idea. You really do just have to try different ideas. You can put it on. You can take it off if you don't like it. It's not too bad. It's okay. It's not kind of as exciting as I was hoping. So, hmm, what else should we add to it? I mean, the blue does look beautiful. You won't be able to know until really when, when it dries exactly how it's going to look. And, you know, it is all very impressionistic and abstract. It's not an exact representation. So, you know, it's okay. But it needs something else. That's all I can say. What about some copper? We need something warm, maybe. So this one is a Liquitex Iridescent Rich Copper. Doesn't that even just sound amazing? <laughs> now, I don't know what I'm going to be able to, you know, say that this is. Maybe it's a little bit of land, you know. <laughs> do i need a reason to put it on the copper color with the green looks amazing that was what i was hoping a little bit of warmth on the page i'm thinking yes a little bit of something oh. so it's all going to look quite impacting and dramatic which you know that i love I really do love it. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Oh, this is having more of the impact 
that I wanted. But I like it in amongst the flowy blue. I think I like that because it's establishing a different shape, almost enhancing that landscapey feel, and it's got the fabulous tree stencils. So I think it's all going to be okay. I'm loving it next to her face and the beautiful image transfer. So, okay, this has got to dry, clearly. Okay, so my page is mostly dried. It's a little damp still, but I'm really happy with it. I'm loving my splash of blue and my beautiful copper tone on there. I think it's absolutely glorious. That color works so well with the deep green. Now, if you squint your eyes, it does look like a landscape. <laughs> I just love the trees shape and the way the inks have created this particular line and shape. I love it. I just love it. It's how it makes me feel. Now, I'm not sure if it's entirely finished. I might put something else into here, maybe a shape or a piece of um, collage paper or a stencil. I'm not sure. Oh, it's only just dry. <laughs> but you might come back to find something else found its way onto that page. But I love it. So we're done with that. We might move on to the next pages. Now, the question is, are we going to continue with the image transfers or are we not? What do you think? Are you sick of image transfers? Shall I do something else with all my numerous green papers? Or shall we make up these two beautiful girls? You know, yes, let's do it. Okay, then. So how about I'll show you when I made these image transfers because I do have that footage. And then you can see and you can get another lesson on the image transfers. So you might ask me a whole lot less questions. <laughs> is that there's two factors people two factors it's the print or the amount of paint so i'll show you exactly how i made these image transfers and then we're going to put them into a collage yippee this is a photo from unsplash.com absolutely love that website it's royalty free you have permission to use all of the images without any stress of copyright issues i love this one it's really moody I know what's with me choosing moody ones all the time maybe that's just me <laughs> so um, have a look at unsplash.com or any of the other royalty free websites there are a few and you might find something that you really like remember the biggest thing is to make sure it has some strong light and dark areas of contrast because that is what's going to make the image transfer. Now, I've just used a phthalo turquoise. Look, it's an absolutely beautiful color, the Atelier brand, and image down, transfer on. Again, I'm going to put it onto the tissue paper. This has quite a strong amount of dark around her face. Too much paint, it's going to be blurry. Uh, not enough paint and it won't transfer well. So yes, it is tricky. Righto, good firm rub. Away we go. Let's see how she's transferred. Wow, that's kind of cool. Put it on tissue. Oopsies. I always like to start at the top and let it naturally fall and roll down and squash the crinkles out while you're at it. Sometimes there's a little oopsies in between. Don't let it stress you. Just have another try if it tears or if it crinkles up or if it doesn't work, just try again. You really won't know how to get the feel of this particular application unless you're doing the prints. So no point just watching, you need to be actually making the prints to get the feel of how the paper goes on. Here we go, da -da -da -da. good strong rub. Let's see how she printed. Oh, nice color, stay low turquoise. I like it, I like it. Put it on white tissue and there you go she's absolutely beautiful 
that's a great photo to use as an image transfer it's come up stunning i am very happy with that this time i'm going to use a mix of both the Tur um, phthalo turquoise and i'm going to put on some Payne's gray i'm just going to mix it here on my roll off paper it's really good to have paper on the side here if you put on too much paint on your gel plate then you can roll it off and wipe it on the paper on the side because uh, getting that paint right is pretty much the first achievement not too much it won't print properly but enough so that it takes the image off the plate does take a little bit of practice but you can do it i know you can right and she goes this time see how we come out i might have had a bit much paint this time you'll soon find out Ooh, yes a little bit more paint on the plate this time you can tell even just looking at the gel print but you know i tend to go for the moody ones so <laughs> what does that say about me I like the intensity of the colour. I think I like the deeper tone of this colour. Oh yeah, look at that. That's got strong contrast of dark and light definitely a lot more paint on the gel plate that time very moody not too bad not too bad it's an interesting feel okay so which one are we going to use next i'm loving this beautiful look how beautiful she is uh it printed so well the details are so fine what are we going to put with her do we want to put her over some trees i know i'm still stuck on the beautiful trees what can i say Oh, that could look quite good. I like that idea. Uh, I've got a few to choose from. So how am I going to decide? There's also this one. This one could look quite cool too. Darker or lighter. Ooh, that creates more of a pattern under her. And the other one's a lot lighter. So mm, that's a decision, first of all. And then what am I going to put on this side? You know what I'd like to do on this side? I'd like to just pull up some of these green papers. I've got a whole heap of green papers around that I jelly printed or I found in my box. And I might just do a whole kind of abstract page with all these beautiful greens because we've got to appreciate green. We get to use it without dying. And it's really good <laughs> because the green in the early 18th century was really poisonous and it was created with arsenic and copper and you know it poisoned people slowly but surely so i think i'm just going to put a beautiful collage together on this side with all bits and pieces from these fabulous papers that are surrounding me on my desk yay i like this idea let's just do it so apparently, the story goes, Carl Scheele, who was a chemist working in Sweden at the end of the 18th century, was experimenting using arsenic and created the most incredibly bright green. Of course, he patented his um, discovery under the name of Scheele's Green because he didn't want anybody else to copy what he was creating, but he did feel a little concerned that the nature of the pigments was rather poisonous <laughs> not concerned enough to stop however because what's a little arsenic between friends when you've got brand new color to sell 
So in the range of paints and papers for years, people were plastering this incredibly poisonous substance on their walls. Walls papers were made with it. Fabric was made with it. Artists were using it. And everyone was slowly but surely getting poisoned with arsenic. Arsenic poisoning. <laughs> I just think it's crazy to my brain <laughs> that this is the history of the pigments. What about something like that? Shall we try something like that? I mean, I know I'm really obsessed when it comes to my art, but I don't think I would really want to die for it. I mean, that's a little, a little drastic. I'm pretty glad that I live now and not back then because I probably would have died for it because I would have been one of those people that had to have the latest new colour that had come out, especially if it was bright and amazing and hadn't been seen before. Yes, you would want it too. You'd be lining up for it. We'd all be slowly dying. So, you know, aren't we glad that we live now and not then? I'm going to go with something like this. These papers are amazing. This is um, the, a handmade paper from where I bought the Harakiki from. It's made with recycled materials and it's got these, you know, seeds which kind of was a great idea until they flame and go everywhere <laughs> but, but hey but hey don't worry it's not arsenic so we're all good right we're all good i'm gonna stick this down something like that and then i'm going to put my beautiful girl on this side what am i going to put underneath her i'm still stuck on the trees sorry about it but i just am Maybe this one. I think I liked it the softer idea rather than the harsher one. And that's matching those beautiful green tones. Yes, we love matching. Don't know if I would want matching arsenic laced wallpaper, however. There we are. That is going to work. And you see a little snippet of the tree underneath her. Oh, I just love it. Just love it. Not willing to die from it for it, but I just love it. All right, I'm going to do that. I'm going to glue all that down on there. And it's a little sneaky bit of mark making in there. And my handmade papers and some jelly prints. And then we'll see about what we think next. All right, let's just make that happen. Okay, so we're going well here with my fabulous celebration of green because besides being absolutely toxic in the 18th century as they mixed the copper with the uh, basically arsenic-based pigments, um, it was also unstable and prone to fading. So this is celebrating the beautiful tones and colours of green because we can, right? We have amazing color fast, light fast pigments in all sorts of applications. The oil paints would fade so badly in the green because the pigments were unstable that you can look at famous paintings now and their beautiful rolling lawns are all like meh. <laughs> They're not so green. They might still be rolling, but they ain't so pretty. So I think that's really fun to actually just stop and appreciate the beautiful colours that we get to use in our modern art supplies. Now, of course, it would be wrong to get this far through the week without using circles. I know, right? This week, the fabulous Takapuna Art Supplies, oh my gosh, oh, sent me the beautiful beehive paper in black. Can you believe it? Oh my gosh, it's so fantastic. And I've pulled out these ones and I'm going to put them right there. The final shapes for my beautiful green on this side of the page. Oh my gosh, we had to have circles. There wasn't going to not happen to not have circles. I mean, seriously, that was never going to happen. So I am so excited for these beautiful beehive paper in black. I have a whole sheet of it, and this is my first time using it. Ta-da, ta-da! <laughs> I know, I'm a little dramatic. The glorious beehive paper is just beautiful. It really finishes off my fabulous 
composition of green tones and I just love it. My beautiful girl here is drying. She's not dry, but she's drying. And as she dries, you can see the fabulous forest trees coming through the background. I'm loving her. So there you go. That is page five and six of our green week. Oh my gosh, I'm enjoying this week probably because last week was so hard. <laughs> This one is just like, oh, as I bathe in the tones of the forest. <laughs> so, all right, that's fabulous. Now that's going to dry. All of that will dry. And then we'll do the last one. And yes, I'm probably going to use the last of my image transfers because I'm loving it and I just want to. So we're going to do that one next and I'll just hunt up some more fabulous, beautiful green options for the next couple of pages yay okay well i decided with this one i was just going to put the beautiful image transfer on the page with nothing under it and let the fabulous image just be oh, appreciated because how gorgeous is this one it's more moodier it's deeper in color but as i had more paint on the plate it's a little more smudgy it's not so defined but i really like it <laughs> what can i say i like it moody and emotional oh a little dark um now when you're putting your prints on that are on tissue you do have to be a little careful i tend often to tear them because i sometimes get a little bit too robust but don't stress out it'll be all right uh, she's looking beautiful, and I'm pretty happy with that. Now, I'm still in love with my trees. Yes, I know I haven't been able to move past it. I'm just stuck in the forest. So what can I say? I'm going to put this tree one on here, and I'm going to join that onto this page. Now, I love, love, love metallic colors with the turquoise. Oh, yes, I do. This one, I think, is the copper. It's a glorious color, but also I love the bronze. With turquoise, I think that's pretty much my favourite. Uh, gold works well too. The metallics with the turquoise, the pale turquoise or the deep turquoise, it looks amazing. And if I had to do another two pages, I would probably do it all with turquoise and metallics. So this is a beautiful jelly print that I really like. I'm going to just put it on this side. And then I'm going to put my fabulous trees on top and then i'm not sure after that if i can possibly sneak in a little bit of bronze or some more copper then i probably will what about on this side maybe i could put something Ooh, maybe baby all right we'll have to think about that but this is our last page spread for the beautiful green man that went quick right oh so much better than last week <laughs> That was torturous, torturous, I'm telling you, it was torturous. <laughs> ah, so funny. Right, so all of the papers are down. Now it's just a matter of am I going to leave it alone or will I add some more to it? That is a very good question. I'm going to need to leave it to dry anyway. I'm thinking it's looking beautiful and there's something so simple about this composition that it makes me think you know i could possibly just leave it but i might just wait till it's dry i'm very tempted to put a bit more of the metallic maybe over here somewhere ah i guess we'll have to wait and see <laughs> righto we'll let that dry and then we'll see if we're going to put anything else on it Okay, well, I decided I'm going to do a few little copper leaves because it'll bring that beautiful warm tone of copper across to this page. And I think that'll look really good. Now, I have masked off the um, leaves that I don't want on it so that I don't make a massive big mess. That is always good. And I think this color will look just beautiful with the deep green and the turquoise on the other page yay just a matter of holding it still 
as it wants to curl up because it's only just drying. <laughs> We wouldn't want to wait too long now, would we? <laughs> no. Righto, are you ready? Da 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 da! Oh, yes! That is beautiful. I love it. I might just move this bit of the bottom. That's not quite, not quite happy with those because they're too small. That looks good. See how easy it is to move something that you don't want. That looks fabulous. I'm loving those little leaves. Mm. Maybe we want some over here, trailing down from that copper colour. What do you think? What do you think? Shall we do it? Just a few more over there. Okay. If you insist, I'll just have to do a couple more over there, trailing down that way. That'll look so good. All right, then. Righto, then, because you insisted, <laughs> I'm going to put... Some more of the beautiful copper leaves on this side. Now, masking it off is a great idea because one, you're not getting paint where you don't want it. But also, as you mask it off, you are looking at your composition and you can work out what you want and what you don't want. And it just works really well. Yay! Oh, this colour is going to be amazing once it dries. You will see the beautiful metallic. Are you ready? Are you ready, Steady Eddie? Okay. Ta-da. Oh, man. I blobbed that one. That's not so great. That wasn't as clear and as crispy as I like. So let's just get our little damp cloth. Also going to take it off there. Take it off there. Now, I'm thinking that I might just take off this whole section. And that was blobby like that because the stencil wasn't flat. Because you might have noticed that I'm getting a little bit of a curl. <laughs> we got a bit of a curve happening with the page. And this stencil on this leaf wasn't flat, which is why it went blobby like that. But, you know... Don't stress out. You just get a damp cloth or a baby wipe will work too and you just wipe it off. See? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. There we go. Damage is undone. I'm just going to leave it like that. I think that's enough. I'm happy. I just wanted that flow to come down from this copper colour and then onto that page. It looks pretty cool, I'm thinking. I'm pretty happy. So I'm going to leave this to dry and then we're going to come back and do a, a review of our fabulous green week. <sighs> I'm feeling much better now. <laughs> okay, my pages are all dry and I'm so happy with my beautiful green collection. Ah, oh, just makes me feel rejuvenated, I'm telling you. <laughs> so this is the first um, two pages. I'm loving the forest, my image transfer. I'm really happy I put that extra green bit around the side there. I think it looks great. I like the two page spread. I don't know. I just do. I like it to, to see it at a, as a bigger picture and it just makes me happy. Yay! One, two, three, four. These, this page spread looks just as good. I'm very happy with it. The image transfer is beautiful and I worked on this page a little bit more. I'm loving the branches that you see in the interference paint. Love the copper. And then I put a couple of little rocks in there from a stencil and dripped some more of the silver moss ink over what I already had done with the blue. So it is looking beautiful. It's like, hello, a beautiful abstract landscape. Yes, I'm loving it. It looks fabulous. And we just have to stop for a minute and reflect on the fact that this is actually page 50. <laughs> we are now officially halfway through the 100 days of collage. Oh, my gosh. Look at it. Look at my art journal. Yes. <laughs> I mean, we're halfway. We've done so well. Oh, man. Only halfway. We still got enough half to go. Crikey. Whose idea was this? This was Lizbeth's fault. She suggested 100 days ago. <laughs> I'm absolutely 
absolutely loving it. But I know I'm feeling your pain. It's a lot of work. But look at the beautiful collection that we're making. Oh my gosh. So I'm loving these pages. They're fabulous. They worked really well. Yay. And then, of course, there's this page spread. I put a little bit of the beautiful iridescent bronze fine on a little stencil there because I love the um, bronze cut tones and the copper tones with the beautiful green and turquoise. They look stunning. And that particular bronze is one of my favorites. The image transfer looks beautiful. I love the trees behind her. I just love that incredibly peaceful look on her face. Ah, oh, feeling it, I'm feeling it deep, man, I'm telling you. <laughs> I love my brand new black beehive paper, yay, and the collection of greens, right? We have to appreciate this green pigment. It's not poisoning us, yippee. So now for the last two page spread, oops, as you can hear, it's still a little sticky. <laughs> but look how glorious it is. I mean, come on. I think these two are my favorite. It's probably the deep moodiness of this image transfer, but I'm loving the trees and I love this and it's got the bright, it's got all my favorite elements. It's got the intensity, it's got the emotion, it's got the association with the forest, it's got a little bit of abstract, and it's got the lovely metallic, beautiful copper leaves flowing through. Yes, this is my favourite. I'm loving these pages best. Which ones did you like the best? You'll have to let me know because it's really quite fascinating to me what other people like. You know, there's some people that actually like the yellow ones. <laughs> Um, I know, right? I'm like, are you are you being sarcastic or do you actually like those pages? <laughs> I'm loving this of the Greens Week. This is my pick for the Green Week. Tell me what your pick is. That'd be awesome. And it's been absolutely fabulous. As you can tell, I've loved it. I've loved the forest. I love the green. And I loved being able to show you the beautiful image transfers. So don't forget, you can have a look on either my Skillshare platform. I have three fabulous full-on in-depth classes on there. Or you can look on YouTube, on my channel. I have lots of videos and I have them in a playlist. There's nine of them in a playlist that are associated with image transfers. So if you want some more teaching on that, have a look. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. I love that you join me in this journey that makes it so much more fun knowing that you're watching, that you're encouraging me, and we're getting through this together. Yay! So we have now passed the halfway mark, 54 collages we have completed, and my art journal's still holding up. It's going strong. <laughs> so we'll move into the next color next week. And by now, you know what it is, right? So that's going to be fun. It's also going to be a glorious week. As we get into the blues and then the indigo and violet, I mean, what's not to love? I'm just going to love it more and more and more because I think violet's probably my second favorite color. Yeah, so I'm very much looking forward to the next few weeks with those. Um, thanks for joining me. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and the bell and leave me some comments and like my glorious videos because it's fabulous and I know you're watching. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise people would think I'm strange and they think I'm talking to myself, but I'm not. I'm talking to you. So join me again next week. Can't wait. Yay. And we'll create some more beautiful collages. Yeah.